sense to do that. So first, beginning with Persia. In the ancient Middle East, you've learned that Persia was the greatest empire of the early Middle Eastern period, of the period of the ancient Mesopotamia, the largest and most dominant empire, and some would say the largest empire in the history of the world, was the Persian Empire. It starts with Cyrus the Great, who founded what he called the Achaemenid Empire. And Tom Holland, in his book Persian Fire, talks a lot about the founding of the Persian Empire. He talks about how the Persian Empire swept over the civilizations of Mesopotamia. The Persian Empire swept over ancient Babylon and conquered the city of Babylon. And so this had great implications for the Jews. But first, starting with the Persian Empire, a primary document that one can look at to determine something about the information about the Persian Empire would be the inscription at Behistun. So what was the inscription at Behistun? Why is the inscription important? What can it tell us? Why was the inscription constructed? The Emperor Darius the Great constructed the inscription at Behistun. Why did he do that? And so if you look at any translation of the inscription at Behistun, what does it tell us? So it says, I am Darius, the king of kings, the great king. And it goes on to say who Darius is descended from. It goes on to say what Darius did. It goes on to say what the god Ahura Mazda thinks of Darius. Why did Darius have this inscription written? Why did he have it on the side of a mountain up high, overlooking what Tom Holland talks about, the Corsican, high, the Corsican Highway? Why, why there? Why did he have it translated into multiple languages? Why does the inscription show him sitting on a throne with prisoners in front of him? Why does the inscription say what it says? Well, at this point, you've probably realized why. Because in the ancient Near East, a king, a leader, wanted to impress upon others his power, wanted to impress upon others his achievements, wanted to impress upon others why he ruled and others didn't, why he was fit for rule, why he had the heritage and the background to rule. The inscription of Behistun tells us all of this. This is why it's an important primary document. And so if you're to, to look up on the internet um, about the inscription of Behistun, you're going to learn, see a lot in terms of what it meant in terms of Darius's religion, in terms of Darius' achievements, and in terms of Darius's background. So it's very clear why he wanted to do that. Ancient Persia was a hierarchical society, meaning there was a very strict delineation, a very strict division between those at the top and those at the bottom. And no one was at the top or higher than the emperor. Darius wanted to be emperor. He needed to prove, needed to state why he deserved to be emperor. That's the story of the inscription at Behistun. And Tom Holland, how does Tom Holland elaborate that on Persian fire? If you were to read chapters 1 and 2, you can see how he emphasizes what Darius did and why he did it and how that relates to the inscription at Behistun. Moving on, we can look at a smaller, a smaller civilization, the Jews. Whereas the Persians go down in history as having one of the largest civilizations in the Near East, the Jews have a much smaller, a much smaller state, two states in fact, Israel and Judah. And so what, is, what does Psalm 137 tell us about the Jews? Well, Psalm 137, which Tom Holland uses and refers to in chapter 2 of Persian Fire, Psalm 137 tells the story of the exile of the Jews in Babylon. And there are even, this is, has even become a famous pop song by the Rivers of Babylon. If you were to search on YouTube for a song, The Rivers of Babylon, it's, uh, you see many pop songs and pop singers singing The Rivers of Babylon, but using the same words as Psalm 137 in the Book of Psalms in the Old Testament. So it's in the Jewish religious tradition, Psalm 137, tells the story of the exiles in Babylon. So reading that, reading Psalm 137, what does it tell us about ancient Judea? What does it tell us about the Jews? What does it tell us about Babylon? Well, what it tells us is the Jews, when Babylon conquered Jerusalem, Nebuchadnezzar sent the Jews into exile. And if you were to watch a documentary such as Engineering an Empire of the Persians, Engineering an Empire of the Persian talks about Cyrus the Great, who was the leader of Persia, who conquered Babylon. And what did Cyrus do when he conquered Babylon? He freed the Jews and sent them back to Jerusalem. He rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem. 
So Psalm 137 is a very powerful psalm. It tells a great story, an epic story of a people in exile, a people pining to go back, a people vowing they will go back, a people vowing they will keep their faith even though they're exiled. So why? So you should look at Psalm 137 to learn more about the Jews in exile in Babylon. 